Good afternoon. ABC News now presents the President's News Conference. From the State Department Auditorium in Washington, the ABC Television Network now brings you by videotape President Kennedy's 56th News Conference held this afternoon. This is Bill Shadell. It has been two weeks since the President last met with reporters. That was a time of racial disturbances in Birmingham, Alabama. And the President came to that meeting with a prepared statement concerning mediation. The President, followed by staff members, now enters the auditorium. The reporters rise as their custom. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. President, how do you regard the Alabama governor's announced intention to block the integration of the University of Alabama? For instance, do you, uh, or does the government plan to use federal marshals as it did in Oxford, Mississippi, if the governor does go through with his in, in, announced intention to prevent these Negro students from entering? Well, I hope that would prove unnecessary. I hope this is a matter that can be settled by the local, uh, local authorities in uh, Alabama. The university, since last October, as Board of Trustees have taken the position that they would accept a court order. They've now indicated that they'll accept these students. The courts have made a final judgment on the matter, and I would hope that uh, the law-abiding people of Alabama would uh, follow uh, the judgment of the court and uh, admit the students. No other, every other state in the country has integrated uh, their state university, and I would hope that uh, Alabama would follow that example. I know there's a great uh, opposition in Alabama, and indeed in any state, to federal marshals and federal troops, and I would be very reluctant to see us reach that point. But I am uh, obligated to uh, carry out the court order. That uh, is part of our constitutional system. There is no uh, choice in the matter. It must be carried out, and laws which we do not like must be carried out uh, and laws which we like. This is not a matter of choice. We're a matter of choice. It would not be law. So that uh, these uh, decisions uh, must be enforced. Everyone understands that. Now, I cannot believe that the governor wants us to send uh, federal troops there. I cannot believe he wants us to send federal marshals there. I cannot believe that he would not prefer to have the people of Alabama govern this matter and accept the order of the court and maintain law and order. The governor has uh, taken action against uh, federal troops who are now stationed at federal bases in Alabama and has taken the action of the Supreme Court. I said that I welcome that. This is where these disputes should be settled. So that I would hope that the fact that the governor has chosen to carry out our dispute in the courts indicates that in the final analysis he will accept the judgment of the court in the cases coming up in June as I would accept the judgment of the courts as to my powers to use a uh, control federal uh, troops under certain uh, conditions in various states. We're a people of laws, and uh, we have to obey them. Uh, yes. uh, you have predicted a sharp drop in the price of wheat as a result of yesterday's referendum. I wondered if consumers can look forward to proportionate reductions in the costs of certain foodstuffs as a result. As you know, the uh, amount that a farmer gets in a loaf of bread is about one cent out of a so that uh, you won't expect a very sharp drop. What I'm concerned about has been that you would have a drop in prices because you would have a uh, great buildup of surpluses. A free market is regulated by supply and demand. If the supply is greater than the demand, and quite obviously uh, it, it uh, can be and uh, will be because uh, everyone is now free to plant what they wish, then of course that knocks the price down so that we'll have a combination of lower prices and larger surpluses. We sought to avoid that. but. Uh, this is a free country, and the farmers were offered their choice, and they made the choice by a, uh, great, a great number of them voted for the free market and unlimited production. So uh, we're going to be faced with the problem, but I don't think it will have much effect on the consumer. It might, but it, uh, it, uh, I think it's going to cause more difficulty to the economy because it's going to provide these large surpluses, and it's going to, I think, reduce farm income, particularly wheat farmers, and uh, that's not the interest of the consumers, of course, or the farmer. Now, our feed grain bill will give him some relief. We will administer the laws that are now in effect in such a way as to give him maximum protect protection, the wheat farmer. We'll cooperate in every way we can to maintain his income as high as we can. But I am concerned, as I said before the vote, that production will be increased and income will drop and price will drop. President, uh, yeah. <laughs> if there is no new legislation and the 
price of wheat does decline rather sharply. What would be the political consequences of that for you in 1964? Well, I don't know. Uh, I tried to make it very clear what the alternatives were and what I thought was in the best interest of the farmer, the wheat farmer. I felt that his best interest would be served by attempting to bring production in line with demand with a uh, high, adequate to income for him. Now, the farmers have chosen to uh, plant uh, freely without controls and without uh, that high support. We'll have to see what the effects will be. In any case, under the law that was passed, there is a chance for another referendum next year. And then we can see whether uh, what the effect of this action has been. But we want to help in every way we can. And uh, But uh, the farmers have made a choice. And uh, even though I didn't agree with the choice, I recognize it and accept it. And we hope that it does not have an adverse effect. Uh, Mr. Harold Brown has said before a Senate committee that we could accept as few as six on-site inspections. Do you think that there is further ground for us to move now to approach the Soviet Union in a test ban situation? Well, that's uh, the position we've taken more publicly has been seven. There's been discussion of six. Mr. Brown, whose judgment I value highly, has not set the official government position. He was giving his judgment as a scientist. There are a good many other questions that must be settled. We've suggested to the Soviet Union that we would consider the makeup of the inspection team, the rules under which the inspection team would operate, the area where there could be drilling, all these other questions. And then if we could get those settled, we could then come finally to the question of the number of tests. The Soviet Union has refused, however, to consider these other matters until we agree with their position of three. Now that's not has not been an acceptable negotiating position. We feel that uh, we ought to try to wind up all the other questions which divide us, then we could finally come and decide what would be, given the arrangements we've made for these other matters, what would be a responsible number of tests. But we are back and forth to the Soviet Union, and we're still uh, hoping that we can uh, find a, uh, perhaps an easing of their position. Where is the genie, sir? Is it out of the bottle or in the bottle? Well, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, neither in nor out right now, but I would say that we ought to, we'll know by the end of the summer whether it's... Uh, finally out. I said from the beginning that it seemed to me that the pace of events was such in the world that unless we could get an agreement now, I would think the chance of getting it would be comparatively slight. We are therefore going to continue to push very hard in May and June and July in uh, every forum to see if we can uh, get an agreement, which I regard as of, of uh, but I will say as of now, since December, there has been no change in the Soviet position on the number of tests, no willingness to discuss in any way any of these other questions until we accept their position of December, which is not a satisfactory position for us. Are we about to move, sir? We're not going to move. Uh, on the question of the number of tests, we, as I indicated, we, what we are proposing is we settle the other matters and then come to the number of tests. So in answer to your question, we're not moving at this time on the number of tests. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, this is certainly one of those rare occasions when a news conference with so many reporters in Washington has ended before the usual half hour has been used up. The president is leaving the State Department auditorium and will be returning to the...